Hello, good evening. A warm welcome to all of you to Apex India Community first virtual meeting. My name is Jaitanya. I'm the product manager for Oracle Apex. I work for Joel Kalman as part of Apex product development team and the database development tools group headed by Mike Hichwa. I welcome all of you to this learning session, Oracle Apex India community, learn, connect, and collaborate. Thank you so much for joining in today. And I would love to pass it on to Joel for his kickstarting the event today. What do you talk? Okay, thanks, Chaitanya. And you're recording, right? Yes, I'm recording. Awesome, thanks. And I'm gonna turn your video off. Oh, awesome, thanks, Chaitanya. All right, uh, thanks everyone. Uh, good evening and thanks for joining us today. I'm actually quite honored to, uh, to speak at today's event and I want us to recall um, this date in history as the date that um, things really blossomed for Oracle Apex in India. I realize that there's been a large community for many years there, and I just feel that um, we're going to take this to the next level. Okay? So my name's Joel. As Chaitani said, um, I'm a co-creator of Oracle Apex. Uh, Michael Hitchwell and I started Apex back in 1999, and we've been leading the development and product management of it since that time. I'm proudly based in Columbus, Ohio, USA, and um, actually have been an Oracle employee since 1996, so coming up on my 24-year anniversary. Um, as I mentioned, I live in Columbus, Ohio, which I lovingly call Apex HQ2, and it has the second largest concentration of Apex product development team members on the planet. But uh, truly, uh, Global Apex HQ is based in Reston, Virginia, which is just outside of Washington, D.C., and this is where a large number of uh, Apex developers are, are located. Uh, Christina Cho, uh, Shakib Rayman, uh, and our senior vice president, Michael Hitro, amongst others. And that's Mike pictured here. As anyone who knows me, I'll, always, I'll never miss an opportunity to uh, proudly educate people about the state of Ohio, which is where I'm from and, and where I live, and just to share some famous Ohioans with you that I assume many of you have heard of. Um, Thomas Edison, who's America's greatest inventor and holds more than a thousand patents, was born in Ohio. Uh, the Wright brothers, uh, commonly referred to as the fathers of flight, are from Dayton, Ohio. Uh, Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon, uh, was from uh, Ohio, born in Ohio. And actually, Nobel laureate uh, Toni Morrison, she's the first African-American woman to ever be selected for the Nobel Prize in literature all proudly from Ohio. Um, the Apex community is the most passionate in all of Oracle. As I often say, it's uh, unique within Oracle, and I think unique within the industry, in part because there's a feeling of authenticity about it. Um, customers and partners have been very successful with Apex for many years, and there's always been a large sense of community about it. And we would like your help in growing this community in India. I think it's a natural thing to do. For those who are perhaps new to Apex and not familiar with it or what it can do, let me tell you, Oracle runs on Apex. Oracle is a business like any other business on the planet. We have HR and legal and sales and finance and security and marketing and manufacturing and distribution. And this company has real application needs like all others. And at Oracle, there are literally thousands of applications across the company written by various lines of business of people with varying skills. Um, we can look at a number of applications here, one for uh, global immigration. If you are gonna travel internationally for Oracle, you enter a row here and uh, somebody reviews it and determines what, uh, what visas you might need. Um, we also get, uh, here's a room booking application. Uh, everybody, at least in North America, gets a report of the um, mobile phone spend of your employees and it's an Apex application. 
And you might look at some of these applications and you might say, Joel, some of these look really modern and some of these look pretty old, like they were written back in, I don't know, 2007 or 2008. And my answer to that is exactly. Um, some of these probably were written in 2007 or 2008, haven't updated the UI at all, probably haven't even updated the functional the functionality of it, yet they're still running today. If you're looking for one slide that encapsulates low code and Apex, it's probably this slide. And this is um, beyond just Apex, it's um, being able to use a framework or a tool set to deliver higher quality product, deliverable application in less time and with greater, uh, um, with less cost to develop and less cost to maintain. And so instead of opening up your Visual Studio Code or editor and start writing the first line of HTML or CSS or SQL, in Apex, you can do everything within this one consistent web UI. Load data, do data modeling, uh, develop applications, deploy applications, run applications, all from within this one consistent web UI. People who are JavaScript programmers using um, React or Angular or Vue, um, it, it's very common and very popular today to use these open source JavaScript frameworks. And I'm not anti-JavaScript. We heavily use JavaScript in the development of Apex itself. But to contrast what one would have to do um, in a JavaScript framework versus Apex, is really very well portrayed by this graphic. And that is, it's very common in business applications to want to show a, an editable grid of data. And I went out on the internet and I did a Google search for uh, uh, the most popular editable grid components for React. And in the results, there were rankings of them. There were uh, 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 sites that rank the top 10 grid components for React. And I took one that I thought was the most attractive and most appealing. And I looked at their example. And this example required me, the developer, to write 650 lines of JavaScript to integrate this component in my application. This is even putting aside the fact that somewhere this is going to get data from somewhere, probably over REST. So I'm going to also have to author some SQL and host some REST somewhere to do this. But still, I've now incurred 650 lines of technical debt that has to be reviewed and secured and maintained and managed and upgraded. And we contrast this with, let's say, the Apex Interactive Grid, which a, a customer has lovingly told me is the gold standard for grid components on the internet. And you, the developer, assuming you have your table already predefined, you provide a query to Apex, and we put this wonderful, beautiful grid interactive component on it that is just rich with functionality, that you can do sorting and pivoting and charting and aggregation and uh, 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 email subscription and download and column selection and filters and groupings and on and on and on. And oh, by the way, this component is responsive and accessible and secure and efficient with the database. And all you had to do was enter a query. It couldn't be easier. Apex ultimately started in 1999, and Michael Hitchell, our senior vice president, started the first line of the framework of Apex. This was on, let me look at the date now, August 4th, 1999. And on the very same day, I started the development of a calendar application, and I programmed our new calendar application in this framework. And an important point I want you to remember from today is First and foremost, we're developers. We're not tool builders. Um, we get a lot of enjoyment out of building and deploying usable, attractive, functional applications at scale. And we've written a tool and framework 
to help us do that. So rather than just write a tool set and hope people come to use it, we use it ourselves. And this holds true for today. So back in 1999, in a matter of three months, we started from literally nothing, not a line of code on the framework of Apex or the calendar application and deployed the first ever Apex application on the planet. And it was rolled out to about 25,000 Oracle employees. Now, we can't take sole credit for this. We had um, help from smart people like Tom Kite, who helped us with the architecture and performance aspects. But really, this was the genesis of Apex, 1999. And if we look at the history of Apex, really Apex was first delivered to customers in 2004. And we've enhanced the capabilities of the framework over the last 21 years up to effectively the latest release, which is Apex 20.1, and that was just released last week. And you can also try it right now on apex.oracle.com. And I like to think not only have we kept up with technology and technology change in the industry, but I like to think in some aspects, we have led it. Because think about this, in 2004, which is uh, probably a lifetime for most people on this call, was anyone talking about browser-based hosted multi-tenant declarative or low-code application development back then? It's unlikely, but here we are. Just last month, there was a transformational event in the history of Apex. And I gave an interview to an industry analyst, Tony Baer, and his article was published in ZDNet. And I thought Tony did an outstanding job of capturing this backstory. And um, I put a little QR code here if people want to look at this later. But I'd like to tell you about this briefly. This system, which is called the Therapeutic Learning System, or TLS for short, was the idea of Larry Ellison, our founder and, and CEO. And this is not a, a, a classic clinical trial system. It's a, it's a data gathering system to gather crowdsourced feedback about the efficacy of treatments for coronavirus. And this was developed from scratch and deployed. Not a line of code was written, not, not a single line of DDL, no table structure, no, no cloud infrastructure was deployed. Everything was done from beginning to end in under two weeks. And this involved more than a thousand people at Oracle and our Apex product development team, we were fully mobilized. We stopped what we were doing and people worked around the clock to build this set of applications. So it's more than just the application you see here. There's applications for doctors, for patients, for back office support, for a real time dashboard. There's over seven apps, over a hundred pages, and it was developed from beginning to end and deployed for real and live today in two weeks. And the first working system was available in three days. We worked for three days and this was truly the transformational moment for Apex. And this was when in three days we had a working system and we were showing it to Larry Ellison and other executives at Oracle and many doctors in the Zoom meeting and they provided a wealth of feedback, just even on the first page, about um, position and colors and text and fonts and uh, a reduction of clutter. And at some point in time, Larry Ellison asked Shakib Rayman from our team um, if we had all this feedback, if we had captured all this feedback that he had, he and these other doctors had provided. And Shakib simply said, let's make the changes live. And for anybody who's used Apex, to you this is this is easy. You've done this for years. You understand how this is possible. But it was at this moment that I think the eyes of all the executives from Oracle and our executive management was opened up to Apex because we spent the next two and a half hours working with our the business users, doctors, Larry Ellison, these executives, building this application in real time. And it was amazing because it showed 
how you could engage your end users and interactively build a, a, as fast as they think. So they, you can make your changes and they see it and you make your changes again and you see it again. And it, this is the reason why <laughs> the next day, March 23rd, I published this tweet on Twitter. And, and I believe it to be true because I believe it truly was that day, even though Apex has been around forever and uh, it's kept up with the industry and there's 500,000 developers worldwide and it's used throughout Oracle. I don't think until this day, people really got it about Apex. And I'm proud to say today they do. So this application was started on the evening of the 18th. The prototype was done in three days. We iterated almost every night that following week, um, and it was rolled out on April 30th and announced by the White House on the 3rd of April. And even though, understand, the primary goal of this system, all we really care about is for this to help identify a treatment for coronavirus. But this has also been what I like to call the, the great awakening inside of Oracle. I'm going to switch topics here a little bit. Um, just so people know what's happening in the world of Apex, we are continuing to expand our presence around the globe. Um, Salim Halal, he's our product manager in the Middle East, and there's already a large group of developers and Apex community there. And we have Salim there to help foster this and be a resource for our customers and partners. Likewise, for Latin America, we hired uh, Monica Godoy, and she's a product manager based out of Colombia, and she's responsible for Latin America, kind of a, kind of a big region. Um, but there's a lot we can do there, and it's Monica's role to help foster that growth and continue to be a resource for our partners and customers. And which takes us to today. And even when I talk about the great awakening inside of Oracle about Apex, I also like to think there is a great awakening happening in India for Apex. I, I see it. It's tangible to me. I see it online. I see it on LinkedIn. Um, and there is really um, a growth to this great community. And we're very lucky to have uh, Chaitanya Karadamati as our product manager there to help foster this growth and be a resource for our partners and customers likewise there. And I want everyone who's watching this or attending this to know that there's already a large, helpful, growing community in place in India. And you should feel free to rely upon this community in the future. If you're new to Apex, I encourage you to watch the replays of something called Apex at Home. It was this uh, historic 24-hour uh, virtual conference that we had um, a couple weeks ago, and it was probably 24 of the best speakers in the global Apex community. There is a ton of wealth and knowledge to be learned from these sessions, and all of these sessions are available online and using the same platform, this Office Hours, platform from Stephen Forestine um, that we're recording right now. And so I encourage you to maybe watch one video a day and, and you'll uh, honestly, it's probably some of the greatest learning content you could ever see um, for Apex. I developed this map just this morning and I think it's fascinating to look at the map that I presented at the beginning of, of Apex HQ2 and Apex HQ, it was in the beginning, it was Columbus, Ohio and Reston, Virginia. And it's fascinating to contrast this map with what we have today and where we're at today in being able to amass a team. What I have are pins from where we have people in Apex product development around the globe. And it's fascinating to see how we've grown over time. And we've been able to collect, I say collect, uh, organize a team of amazingly talented people. And this is our team today. We're spread around the globe. We're used to working remotely. So when this pandemic struck and everybody had to work from home, the vast majority of people, um, they were accustomed to it anyways. And this is a marvelous collection of people 
whose first passion is designing and building and delivering beautiful applications at scale. But this is what we do. And it's what we've done for 20 years. So let's see what happens ahead. Um, Apex has largely been a community supported framework and I've taken personal pride in that. I've loved it because our customers have really had amazing success, had promotions, had raises, um, were able to have careers, and this really was our great reward. And today there's more than 500,000 developers around the globe using Apex. And we're now gonna make the transition from uh, community supported to actually there's gonna be a material interest from Oracle by sales who love Apex to a real marketing plan and a budget for the first time in my career. And so for all of us, it's gonna be interesting to see how things grow with the full power of Oracle behind it. Shakib Raymond, who's the UI designer of Apex and the creator of Universal Theme talks about the transformation of Apex. And a couple of years ago, I was asked in a public forum to name my favorite feature of Apex. And that's kind of a delicate situation because I don't want to offend anybody. How can you have one great feature when um, there are many good things to choose from and there's so many talented people on this team? Regardless, I gave an answer. And I said it was the universal theme because the universal theme, which came out just about five years ago, um, it has changed the perception about what someone can do with Apex. For those who don't know, universal theme is effectively the UI of Apex, and you're able to declaratively style your application without writing CSS or JavaScript. And it has had a wonderful evolution over these past five years. And so I say that universal theme changed the perception about Oracle because Apex was always super functional, but it wasn't necessarily beautiful. And people started to take note of Apex when they realized that they could create beautiful apps with no code. I'm not a CSS guy. I'm not a JavaScript guy. I'm a backend database guy, but I can create beautiful applications. And this is really thanks to Shakib. And so why do I say this? Um, I want the Apex community in India to be very proud of Shakib. He was born in India and he moved to the US as a child and he has helped transform Apex in ways we have never envisioned, never even imagined before. And it continues today. Just a couple last things here if I can. On March 18th on my, on my personal blog, I, I issued a, a plea to the community and I effectively asked all the people in the community who are very talented and capable, capable to actively seek where your talents can be used. And also, don't wait for people to come to you and say, okay, Joel, we need your help. Now is a time where people have massive information needs. They needed applications yesterday, and you have an amazing talent to be able to help them. And I want you to proactively seek to help these people. As an example, the Apex community has delivered once again. And if you go to the Apex community site, apex.world, you'll see an amazing array of COVID-19 applications on apex.world. So I have three very simple requests for you if I could be so bold. One is use your talents to help others. In the US, IT people are essential workers. You are an essential worker. If you know Apex, you have the ability to create applications that people desperately need. Use Apex on the free autonomous database. I'm not selling you anything. There's something called the, or the autonomous database for free. Go to oracle.com slash free and you can use Apex there for free. Any solution, large or small, is essential. 
this is another bold thing for me to say, but I'm going to say it. I think those of us in IT are very fortunate. Most of us, other than being quarantined, we're spared from this pandemic. And not everyone is so lucky. In the U.S. alone, I think there are now 30 million people who are unemployed and their lives are wiped out. Their livelihoods are gone. It might never come back. And I trust me, your first responsibility is your family, but I encourage you to help others by sharing your abundance. We're, we're really blessed in the industry and the career that we have, and not everyone is so fortunate. And lastly, I think this is the easiest thing you can do. I encourage you to buy local. And, and maybe this is already common in India, but I'm always quick when I need something, I'll get on my phone or my computer and buy something from amazon.com and it magically shows up at my door. And in Ohio, where I live, the economy is being slowly opened back up. And people are trying to restart their businesses. Um, and I just encourage you to focus on buying local. Um, as part of the opening up in Ohio, a lot of people are gonna need masks. And I stop myself from going to amazon.com and ordering a mask and have it show up. And I actively went out and I found who in Ohio, or better yet, even in Columbus, central Ohio, um, are producing masks that I can buy. And it's gonna be more expensive, but that's okay. It's, uh, uh, I found a local business and they're creating these by hand and they're selling them. And I just encourage you to help your neighbors um, in your city, in your state in India uh, or in India, I strongly encourage you. This is the only way that we're gonna get as a community back together and I encourage you to help your neighbors. So thanks again. Sorry, Chaitanya, far longer than 15 minutes. I'm always terrible with these predictions, but thanks for inviting me to speak. And um, I like to think that we on the Apex team represent the vanguard of the new Oracle. And um, it's our mission to make Oracle cool again, or Mocha, and it's working. Thank you. Thanks so much, Joel. All right, so here is the agenda for today. We have four sessions by uh, four speakers, four rock stars from the Apex India community. Um, first would be 15 tips in 15 minutes by Sridhari Rawa. Second one is uh, design dashboard cards using Oracle Jet Theme and Universal Theme by Mehul. And extending app dev using Oracle Apex and RESTful services by Bala. And finally, Jaydeep is going to talk to you about a quick start with OR2. The first session is by Sri Hari Rawa. Sri Hari is a passionate Apex developer and uh, a very active community member, Apex community member in India, currently working for Oracle. And he has got more than 12 years of experience and uh, he's a principal developer in Oracle ACS systems and tools team. Over to you, Sri Hari. Thank you. Thank you, Chaitanya, for the introduction. Um, thanks, Joel, for the fascinating session. It's always great to uh, listen to your sessions. So let me start uh, sharing my screen. Uh, I think I cannot share. Chetan, you need to stop sharing. Is it all good? Yeah. Okay, so it is not 15 tips, it is just 10 tips. I tried to make 15 tips in 15 minutes, but one minute for a tip is very short. That's so I shrinked it to the 10 tips. And I'm from Bangalore office, uh, working in Oracle. It's a typical safe harbor statement from Oracle. So here, the point I would like to mention all the tips I'm going to share 
or based on my personal experience and the learning. So don't treat it as recommendations from the record. The first basic tip, using bind variable syntax with in Apex. So whenever you write any code inside Apex, within Apex, always use bind variable syntax to refer to the Apex session state. Take an example here, select store from EMP, where job is the P1 job, where the, this is the item name. So this is the syntax you should use, the first one. The second one is fine, but it is making unnecessary call to the PLSQL function, which is a V. But with this, you're still safeguarded from the SQL injection vulnerabilities. And this is the one syntax which you should avoid. So if you use this syntax, and if a user enters something like this, then this is the query which will execute, which definitely don't want to happen. So this is a simple example, but uh, in complex cases, maybe you're exposing the sensitive data, which other users use and see. And always use declarative logic and Apex components wherever possible. For example, declarative logic. So instead of uh, specifying server side conditions like app page ID and the page number, use the condition type. So there are several condition types you can explore. And uh, wherever, if you cannot use this type, you, your requirement is not fulfilled with that. Only then you go for writing the code. Why? Because this is faster even to write and it is low code. So it's the best thing. And the other thing which comes to my mind when you talk about declarative logic, the links. So when you have even the report links, either in the classic report or uh, interactive reports, always try to use the column type link. If the links has to be conditional, so you can use uh, Apex page, get URL API to generate the links, but uh, never go for concatenating approach. Because when you use this get URL approach, all the cases are taken care for you. Like maybe you're opening a pop-up page or maybe you're opening, a, you're linking, you're targeting to a normal page from the model page. Or maybe you just switched your URLs from the friendly URLs, from the normal URLs to friendly URLs in 20.1. When you use this, or when you use the column type link, you don't need to worry about anything. Automatically, everything will be taken care. And using Apex components. Yeah, so wherever possible, go for Apex components. One example, uh, instead of writing the code and execute one page load section, you can go for a dynamic action, which fires on the page load event. The advantage is when you go for Apex components, you can use the server side conditions, you can use the authorization schemes, right? So you can leverage the Apex framework. But when you write, when you chip in some code here and there, then you will miss all those uh, framework features. Preventing duplicate page submits. So when you have a page where you're creating the new records, so for most of the, uh, for in general, the enable duplicate submit option will be S for all the pages. So when the page is taking so much time to process, sometimes users can click on create again or more than once. In such cases, you users may end up with uh, duplicate records created in the database, or they may get the unique constraint errors if there are any unique constraints. To prevent that, you just set this to no, and if users tries to submit the page more than once, then they will get this error. If you don't want that thing to happen, or you, you want the user to prevent it from clicking multiple times, you can change the button condition and you can change the button action to fire a dynamic action. And uh, you create the dynamic action which will fire the submit page and specify the request or button name and turn on this flag, show processing. So when you do this, um, the moment once user clicks it, an overlay will appear and the busy icon will be shown. User cannot click the button again. So user has to wait till the response is coming back from the server. HTML expressions. So, let us say this is your classic report or interactive report output, and you want to 
convert this to something like this. Based on the risk high, medium, low, you want to show some icons. You can do this using uh, directly putting this HTML inside the SQL query, but this is a better way. So you can write, you can derive the CSS classes. In my case, I need the icon, I need the, uh, some color for the icons to derive based on the data. So I derive this at the SQL level. Then I go to the column and in the HTML expression, I just paste the HTML code. And uh, wherever I need the icon, I use the uh, icon column here. Wherever I need the color for the style, I use this uh, color column here then you will get this advantages of using this approach the filters will still work if someone filters risk evaluation low it still works and if someone downloads it definitely don't want the icons or html in the download so the download will still work remote debugging so this is a very useful feature when uh, you are in, in production in environments. Um, for example, user rings in and say, hey, he is getting some error, but uh, by the user explanation, you cannot understand what's happening. Then when user is logged in on the other side, in the application express builder, in the administration section, you can go to monitor activity. And this is enabled for the developer. You no need to have the administration privilege on the workspace. So you just click on that. Then you can see all the active sessions. You can filter by the users. Once you click on the session, you can see the debug level and you can enable this and click on apply changes. So this debug level will work irrespective of the setting at the application level. Even in the application you set debugging enable, disable, it will still work because that flag is to control whether users can enable the debug from the URL changing. Now, once you change the debug level to the level you wish to see and click on apply changes, then for each page submit, for each AJAX, for each page rendering, you can see the debug ID. Once you click that, it displays the same level of information how as a developer, when you enable the debug, you will see the, all the details, right? The same way you will see here. You can also do the same thing using the Apex Session API. So just specify the session ID and the debug level. Once you do that, the debugging will be enabled on the remote session. You can use Apex debug messages to query the debug. Once you're done, you can set the level to null that will disable or the turn off the debug for that session. Cross-site scripting. This is uh, especially useful for the applications which are facing the internet so attackers can try to inject some client side scripts into your application uh, and their script may run on your application so how do you ensure this doesn't happen to your applications you can perform a simple test on all the form pages where the user can enter some data just enter this script script type javascript alert hacked once you do Go to all the pages where it's that. Luckily, most of the Apex components handle it for you by default in the latest versions. Let's assume you have the few comment section where uh, you were able to insert this uh, JavaScript. Then Maybe this P1, I, P1 comments is displaying the read-only condition or read-only modes. Then it won't trigger alert, so it is automatically taken care. You have a static region with the ampersand syntax, you're referring the comments. Still, it is taken care. But if you have a PL SQL dynamic content, you are doing something like HTTP.p and the comments, then it will fire. It will show you the alert. So how you fix that? You can uh, use Apex escape HTML. It will escape all the characters for the HTML as well as JavaScript. 
script. So this will not show you the alert. It will show the text, this, this as a text. And if you're using anywhere else, the P1 comments uh, ampersand syntax, it is still showing you the alert. Then you can use this escape filter exclamation mark HTML, then it will escape the HTML, then you won't get the alert. Similarly, you have other escape filters for JavaScript, for HTML attributes. And this RA is basically, it will do the reverse of what it do. For example, here in the static region with source, if you use P1 comments, uh, exclamation mark RA, then it will render it as is, then user will get the alert. So you may need it when you want that to happen, maybe in the templates or email templates, for example. And for the reports, so either the classic report or interactive report, it's automatically taken care by default. If you are getting in the report, you need to check this escape special characters, ensure it is turned on. When to commit. So this is, I observe whenever someone is new to Oracle Apex, they tend to issue commit statements inside their code, be it in the front end or on the back end. Ideally, you don't need to do issue a commit in general, because Apex will do a commit for you when it is actually required. Maybe once the page is successfully submitted or when the page is successfully rendered and in all other cases. If you have a commit, let us say you have six page processes which execute in the sequence once you submit the page, Maybe your third process is failing and you have a commit in the second process. So whenever any of the process fails, Apex will try to roll back it, whatever the processes it has executed. Since you have a commit in the second process, Apex cannot do that rollback properly. You will end up with the partial thing done, which you never want to do in your application. using encryption for sensitive data. So your applications may be storing the sensitive data, maybe be it the credit card information or be it the other number or citizenship card numbers, or maybe the mobile numbers, whichever is sensitive. So in the database, you can use uh, encryption. So you can encrypt the columns and you can save it. But when user is entering the data in the front end, still you can the data will be stored in Apex session state as a normal data. So anyone with the access to the metadata or as a developer, you from the backend, you can see what the user is entering. So how do you prevent that? It's, it's simple. So here, for uh, example, I just created two items. One item with the flag off, store value encrypted in the session state, and the other item with the flag on. And once users enter the data here, as a developer, if you go to the backend, again, to the same place, administration, monitor activity, check a session. In that session, you see the session state item values, what user is entering the front end. You can see the first field, as a developer, you can see what user has entered. But as a, for the second field, which will enable the uh, security, it will be hidden. Even as a DBA, if he tries to query the WWV flow data table, he cannot see it. it will, he will see encrypted value. User interface defaults. So this is one of the less used and less exposed, less explored future in Apex. It is there from a couple of years, if I'm not wrong. So this is basically to set some default settings for the columns and the items whenever you create the uh, interactive reports or the forms using the wizard. So to do the setting, it's a one-time setting for each table. So you go to SQL workshop, utilities, user interface defaults, the table dictionary, search for the table. You don't find your table, click on synchronize to synchronize the metadata. Then for each, column, you can specify a lot of details, what you generally do in the page designer. What is the label? What is the help text? How it should be displayed? Is it a text area or normal text field or number field? 
alignment, right? Even the list of values, a lot you can define. You can also define the region names for the form and the region. That you can do for the tables. And if you don't want to do at the table level, maybe you just want to do for few commonly used columns. Let us say active flag, it is there in every table. I will just use it for that column. So you can define that at the attribute dictionary. So here there is no table, you just specify the attribute. Now, wherever the column name is active flag, so this will be kicked in, these settings will be kicked in. Now, once you have that settings done, when you are creating the interactive report or form using the create wizard, once you select the table, you have to choose user interface defaults. I think by default it is yes. Once you do that, that's it. So all your settings, the labels, uh, all the settings you did at the user interface defaults will be taken care. So you don't need to touch it. And this is, you just do that once for every table. Few points you need to remember. So the user interface defaults, it will only be applicable when you're using a create page wizard. And uh, they won't work retrospectively, like you have already created forms and uh, reports. Now you want to sync it with the new user interface defaults. You can't do that. And third, it still doesn't work for IG regions. I think it is maybe in the next future releases. User experience is a quite a big topic by itself, but here I just want to give you two simple tips which can improve the user experience score for your applications. First thing is about messages. So we give several messages to the user from the application. Alert messages, confirmation, success, error, no data found, item help text, right? Whenever you give these messages, keep two things in mind. One, inform users what to do, not just what has happened. So consider these validation messages. It says task name cannot be empty. Yeah, it is understood. They have to enter for the task name. But what is better is you tell the user what to do. Please enter task name. So this is more user friendly than this. Similarly, give specific messages to the users. So instead of saying, hey, no data found, maybe it's a ticketing system for the user. Then give, there are no active tickets in your queue. So this makes more sense than the meaning to the user than just saying no data found. And the other tip is about the buttons. So don't let user to guess, hey, what will happen if I click this button? Instead, you stick to some standards, be it the color, be it the icons, uh, right? be it the position. You stick to some colors, uh, label, position, color, and icon, and let user to predict, okay, I know if I click this button, it's going to happen. For example, here, so what I do for all the uh, buttons which perform update or insert operations, I use hot. All the buttons which delete, I use danger. For all the buttons which just perform navigation, I don't use hot or the type, I just leave them as is. So this way user, users will be sure, okay, if I click the blue icon, something will happen in the database. So they will be cautious. The last tip, keyboard shortcuts. Um, these, there are a lot of keyboard shortcuts. Those, these are the top four I generally use in the Chrome browser. So when you say Alt F5, you can, in the page designer, your changes will be saved and it will be run. And the application will be, the tab will highlight it. And similarly, if you do Alt F7, so your changes will be saved. And Control plus forward slash, then press F, that brings you the page search. And Control plus code, that brings in you the spotlight search. If you want to see all the keyboard shortcuts, so just press Alt plus Shift plus F1. That will show you all the keyboard shortcuts. So yeah, that's it from my side. Um, thanks for listening. Thank you so much, Rui Hari. Uh, it was very interesting, 10 tips. And uh, I have two questions in uh, two minutes, possibly. Um, can I encrypt all the fields in the form as shown in TPSub? 
yeah you can encrypt it is not just one field you so you can uh, encrypt all the fields however the more fields you encrypt so it is a more work for the apex right so you need to consider that aspect as well one more question uh, some hackers try to hack um, by multiple hits on application public page how can is restrict it okay so there are two ways um, one thing is in the database you can keep track of your uh, apex activity log and you can gather the ip addresses from where it is coming so if it is coming from the same ip addresses so you can show um, you can show a widget which will ask users to enter the words what is shown in the widget i am not getting the name for that sorry so it, you, you see that in any public websites. You try to continue to hit that, it, it shows you a widget. Ca ca capture, is it? Capture. Yeah, exactly. Capture. All right. Thanks, Shrihari. Thanks, Joel. And uh, the next session is by Mehul Pandya. Designing dashboard cards using Oracle Jet Team and Universal Team. Uh, Mehul is a founder and principal Apex consultant at Apexify Consulting Firm, and he's a certified Apex professional having 14 plus ex experience in IT and more than eight years in Apex. His primary focus is to provide implementations and training services for BI reporting, dashboard design, and analytical solutions using Oracle Apex. Over to you, Mehul. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I hope everybody is able to see my screen. Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, I think I'll minimize because uh, it's showing multiple. So uh, thanks uh, Chaitanya and Joel for taking such a wonderful initiative and organizing such a, uh, India specific uh, Oracle Apex service hours. Uh, and I hope everybody is safe and healthy. Uh, so today's my session is all about design dashboard cards using Oracle Jet Team and plus Universal Team. So uh, before uh, uh, moving into detail, uh, I will quickly briefly uh, 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 describe myself. My name is Mehul Pandya. Uh, I'm founder of Apex Web Consulting and uh, uh, principal Oracle Apex Consultant. Uh, I'm located uh, at Ahmedabad, Gujarat. I'm also Oracle Certified Apex Professor. I also bring 14 years of experience in IT and more than eight years of experience in Oracle Apex. And here, the, here the, the, these are the my contact details, so you can catch me up later. So uh, earlier I mentioned about the Oracle uh, uh, Jet team. Okay, so uh, you must be wondering about uh, we already have a universal theme, right? Uh, so why to use Oracle Jet theme? Actually, Oracle Jet theme is already shipped with the Oracle Apex. Uh, since I guess a uh, couple of years, but a lot of people were not aware, and I was also not aware. Uh, but when I was uh, in the, uh, exploring the Oracle Jet APIs, uh, uh, using uh, in, I was exploring uh, Oracle Jet APIs, uh, uh, different different. Uh, for example, when I place any Oracle Jet charts component, so uh, behind the scenes, how it works. So I came to know about the Oracle Jet theme. So you can uh, design wonderful and visual appealing applications using Oracle Jet theme as well as Universal theme. So uh, these are the steps to include in uh, interactive grid component, even interactive report or uh, classic report. So we'll look into the detail. So uh, there are two things you need to remember when you want to use the Oracle Jet theme. 
so first thing is if you are using interactive grid and uh, uh, interactive report so you don't need to, to do anything extra you can directly use that uh, oracle jet theme because the when you use the automatically all the old oracle jet libraries are loaded okay but when you are using any classic report or any other static region so you need to manually include this oracle theme uh, jet theme files okay so we'll look into the detail and we'll also look into this how to use uh, oracle jet theme okay so now it's a demo time so let's get started so before moving into the detail uh, i'll uh, take you through the couple of pages uh, so i have created for your reference so you can understand the exact uses of this oracle jet theme and plus universal theme so this is the first example okay so here you can see uh, this whole uh, i have used two interactive grid okay and this circular pages is created from the oracle jet theme and this two items are created from universal theme so you can combine the power of both and you can create the wonderful dashboard dashboard cards now another example is multi row dashboard card so you can combine both the views card views plus tabular view and at the same you can filter it also right and the third page i have created is for example if you want to have multi format card in the same interactive grid or interactive report or uh, classic report so you can design that so for example one column has uh, different format of card second column might have a different format of card third column might have different format of it so you can design as per your needs and as per your requirement so so the last word is last one is a little bit complex and little bit more advanced but you can easily create once you understand the complete oracle jet theme okay so here you can see uh, in the same interactive grid, uh, we have multi-format uh, dashboard cards. So we'll create this from scratch to understand how it has been designed. So first, what we need to do, first what we'll do, first we'll create one page. So here we'll take the interactive grid. and we'll give the meaningful name for example ig dashboard card we we'll create a navigation menu entry as i already have written one query so we can quickly copy and we can now create it okay so this will create a interactive grid with the required data so now we'll see what is the exact output we are getting so this is what we get okay now uh, we'll remove the unnecessary columns which are not required so basically we'll hide those columns okay so in earlier present, uh, presentation joel mentioned about the internet with git so i have just written one query and you get the output so this is the magic of oracle apex now we'll create one virtual column Okay. EMP detail employee detail. Okay, we'll set some alignment. And right now we we will not fetch any data from the database, so the the source will be none, and the type will be HTML expression. So 
already uh, shirari has already mentioned about the html expression so you can uh, see the exact uses of html expression over here so what we will do first we will create one oracle jet panel so i'll explain you detail from where you can get this cell and documentation so we'll save it and we'll run it okay now we'll reorder the column and we will increase the size also now we can see the oj panel so we are also getting some shadow effect right so gradually we will build the dashboard card so you will understand the concept behind so now we will create we will give the color of the we will define the color for the card so this uh, this is the a column name of particular uh, query so this is the syntax if you want to use the uh, uh, value if you want to fetch the value from the query then you, you need to use this syntax the ampersand then column name and the dot so i think harish has uh, shiri has already explained wonderfully okay so now as we don't have any content so we will not be able to see anything else so that will be there will be a blank grid only so now the next step is we will create a flexible bar so see this flexible see basically this card what we have seen is made up of three sections okay this is the first section this is the second section and third section first section is again divided into two sections flexible bar this is the circular this is the uh, flex bar start and flex bar end and the, this is the body area and this is the circular base area so right now what we have done so we are only right now dealing with the first now we will create image inside the flexible bar okay so here this i have given the reference of the image column so it will give the url of the particular image stored in the table and this is produce this will give you the our uh, circular icon and we are defining the uh, percent uh, pixel of in in terms of width and height so this is this comes from oracle jet theme and this comes from comes from the universal theme so we are combining both to produce the wonderful result so now you can see the wonderful output okay and now you are able to see the color also so our next step will be to create the title and subtitle so inside uh, first of all what we did flex bar we created inside that start flex bar we created and we put the image then we took the uh, oj flex bar and and inside that we are putting the title text and subtitle text so now you can see the perfect output okay now the first section is being created okay now we'll create the 
padding between the two section so we can easily create space between the two sections see this class is padding bottom md so this comes from universal theme so you can see the i have taken some classes from the universal theme and some classes from oracle jet theme and it gives me the result what i require so now you can see the little space being created under the first section now we'll create the body of another text now you can see the this text also okay so this all values are coming dynamically from the sql query you just need to remember the syntax and use it carefully now the we'll create the first uh, circular badge okay so what we'll do so now you can see the circular badge in the third section so first section second section and the third section so here we have taken the uh, static values but you can always refer the column values to face the dynamic value now the last part is we'll create the complete card okay so you just need to use the same badge inside that region and you will see the output so you just need to set the width also so we'll set the width for example okay so now you can have such a wonderful card okay inside the interactive bit so here another th another thing i will show it to you so i have not included any external css file or there is no inline css style sheet is written still i am able to create such wonderful card so thanks to oracle jet theme plus universal theme so we are using the best of two worlds okay now we'll see example of classic report so how to use into the classic report so we'll create classic report because in, when you, you are using in the class report you have to do some little bit extra things so i'll show it to you so simple so we'll give the meaningful name we'll create the navigation menu entry and will use the same query okay. again we will hide the unnecessary columns which are not required for display and this employee id will use for our html expression okay so same thing we are using so in our interactive grid we we created one virtual column as uh, and uh, we gave uh, html expression as type but here such type is not available you have to use the existing column only to use the html expression so we'll copy the same code okay and 
and we'll give some cell width. Let us run and see the output. So here you can see the difference. Here we are able to see a complete as a complete card, but here it is not displayed as per our requirement. So what is missing exactly? So one thing is missing. So we that we need to include here in the page section and under page section you have to include this file URL and you need to put this. So this CSS library is responsible for using the Oracle Jet theme. So now you can see the complete output. And you can now go to the next page and this will remain same. Okay, now the last thing I forgot to mention in the interactive grid. Here you can use, see, here we have created, we created this HTML expression type. So we use this settings area, but we can also use another technique, EMP DTL2, for example, I'll give. So here I will not define the HTML expression type. Okay. Here what we will do, we will use the another technique. With the help of JavaScript initialization code. So. I'm sorry to interrupt Mehul. I think sorry. I'm running short of time so i might want to finish okay so you just need to i'll quickly show it to them so you need to just copy this code here and Okay, now you are good to go. Okay. So same thing is producing the result. So this was from my side and I have this last thing I want to mention. You can refer this, I'll share the URL. So you can refer this all Oracle Jet documentation. So uh, Oracle Jet team has given wonderful documentation and you can uh, use this application after downloading. Thanks. Thank you, Mehul. I see a couple of questions are answered in the chat. And uh, uh, there was a question to me that uh, if you're going to make this sample application available for download. So thank you so yes, much. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. So the next session is uh, by Bala Morgan Natarajan, extending application development using Oracle Apex and RESTful services. Bala is Apex enthusiast, and uh, he's been there since HTML DB days in, since 2002. He is uh, currently the vice president for Inog India Oracle Apex user group. Over to you, Pal. You're on mute, Pal. Thank you, Jagannath. Can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect.
let me know see my screen now yes thank you so let me start if, if you increase the volume a bit maybe you could hear me now yes yes speak a bit louder okay sounds good thank you so much chaitanya uh, and and joel uh, for giving us this opportunity in in, in presenting uh, the apex at uh, this uh, large community here uh, uh, really inspired by your speech chaitanya and 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 joel so let me get started uh, before i could jump on to anything else safety first uh, i would say as per the uh, uh, as per the research it says that and at this epidemic uh, you know period i would say everybody please be with your mask family first safety first and please refuse to relate closely with anyone not wearing a mask and any type of mask is fine perfectly right having said that a uh, few lines about me uh, my my name is bala murugunathrajan people call me bala and i am an, and and and, and i have been working with oracle apex uh, since uh, 2002 I, I, i started my work with oracle in the corp hyderabad and 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 uh, did my work with a uh, web and uh, bi space uh, gained a little bit of experience on pre sales consulting on bi space and then i uh, i i do share a lot of my experience with the users on the apex community i'm a mentor for uh, pro as iq uh, a startup i would say and uh, uh, life is beautiful uh, with a lovely wife and a beautiful daughter and that's about me uh, saying that i would jump onto my agenda the agenda of uh, this particular presentation would be a little bit on oracle apex i'm not going to talk more on that uh, but i'm going to talk more on how do we extend our application development using uh, rest enabled services and then followed by it will be a demo what is oracle apex again this snippet from the oracle uh, website uh, oracle apex as we all know it's a low code uh, development and as as the versions goes by i see that it's going to move towards a no code solution you know from a low code solution and uh, and and the better part of it is like we could build a secure enterprise application world class truly world class as we could see with the uh, with, with the with the covid therapeutic uh, system what's been built right now and uh, as, as as we always know that you know we developers love apex and the the time to production is very less and that's one of the reasons why apex is uh, truly uh, a no code solution i do have some practical problems which are when i talk to my clients and this is where uh, we have right now so how can i get data from other third party systems how can i integrate share my data with others and can i do that securely how can i show report based on two different systems you know you say that oracle apex runs on oracle but i do have other other systems why should i store the same data here in the database just to report why should i log into another system to see my own data one application truly and these are some of the practical problems when we as developers try to kind of address the real problems of the system now what is the solutions to it rest so what is rest rest stands for representational state transfer rest is nothing but a web standard like how we have a http protocol standard rest is a web standard based architecture some of the keywords when we talk about, so anything anything and everything in in the in the world of rest is resource so you take a resource you put the resource you grab the resource take the resource move the resource see what is a resource that's how it is so having said that what is a resource and 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 when we talk about rest some of the keywords which we often talk about is url and when we all know being a uh, being a web application developer url is something but a uniform resource locator so basically if you would want to reach out to to do a certain operation you definitely need a, a locator and in the locator you have your resource and then you use your methods to do the operation and that is where we call the methods methods are nothing but get post delete and put and i'm i'm, I'm sticking there is also something called a push but i'm going to stick on to what oracle apex have right now so get is something similar to what we have the select statement in in the, in the oracle in the, in the pl sql world post i would say uh, insert delete as we all know as the name says it's a delete operation put is what we used to do for an update procedure right so having said that what is a a request when when you want to connect connect to another resource 
you would send a request. Now the resource has been reached, you do an operation and the program returns back to you with a response. And that is what is a request and a response. So when you do a request, you're gonna say what kind of a request is it and you're gonna pass some data saying it, hey, do this operation with all these data in it. And that is where headers comes in place. For example, headers again is, is, a, is a key value pair, I would say. Uh, headers would, uh, headers, uh, as, as I said, it's a key value pair. You know, if you would want to pass a JSON object as, as a part of your request, you say in the header saying the content type is application JSON. And likewise, you can send the JSON object in the body. You could send an image in the body and, and stuff like that. Likewise, when you send the request, the program responds back to you with a header and a body. Now, having said all of these, you know, it could be a pass or a fail. It could be multiple things. So you would definitely need a status and a response code. So when we talk about REST, these are a few keywords you would want to keep in mind. URL, methods, request, header body, response, header body, and what is a response code? You, you, you get it back when there is a response. So now to handle all of these, what is RESTful services? It's nothing but a standard method to consume data. You know, a standard method when I talk about it, you have an Oracle database, you have another JSON object, you have another Excel sheet, you have a cloud service, be it whatever it is. You would want to consume data, you want to send data through a standard method, then RESTful is the method for you. Most of the time, enterprise are always not on the same platform. One, one would be on Oracle Apex, one would be on Oracle apps, one would be on Fusion, so they're not on the same platform, but they would want all the data to be kind of seen in the same place. Saying that, you know, data is available in multiple discrete applications. Data need to be consolidated from multiple systems. Data need to be shown at one place. Useful data is everywhere, and we talk about data. So when we talk about data, consumption, the rest is a standard way of doing it. So, to, to kind of make this uh, presentation a little bit more, I'm going to give you a, a scenario and how are we going to solve the problem. So the scenario is I have a booking application which is built on Oracle Apex and I do have a standard POS application. POS is where, where we do the payment and stuff like that, right? So that application is a standalone application, meaning it is not connected to Oracle Apex. It does not have, we don't know what kind of system it is. So in that scenario, I'm going to show you how we can use this system. And to simulate that, I'm going to use a a REST client to do it. So saying that I'm gonna jump onto a, a demo. Um, so, so coming back to where the problem is, POS needs the latest order data. So when I create an order in the order system, the POS system needs the order data. The POS needs any discount. For example, if I would wanna give a discount to my customer based on his pattern of buying. So it, the POS needs the data from the Oracle system, basically from the Oracle Apex system and many more things like that. Right, having said that, Let's uh, get onto a demo. So I have a, I have an order booking system. So let's say this is going to be my application. I just built a simple uh, app in the morning so that I could have one table. And let's say I have a customer, let's say Enog is my customer, Bala is a retro guy. And let's say, you know, there's an item which needs to be, uh, you know, he's, he's gonna, it's, in a, it's in a restaurant. So he's buying a banana cake and the total order is let's say 100 rupees or $100. And today's date is the order date and the payment method, let's say it's a cash payment, right? It's created. Now, if you see, if I order by the order date, let's say today, Bala has bought a banana cake, right? Now, having said that, uh, just to kind of give you an ex uh, a point, I have kind of enabled uh, the ID here, which we generally don't do that. So 26041 is the ID, right? Now, what, so now this data needs to be available in the web through a RESTful service. So how do we do that? So the ways to do that is like simple. With Oracle Apex and ORDS, what we can do is we can easily create a RESTful services and absolutely zero code. 
I don't need to do any coding with respect to RESTful services. It's all with the click of a button. So I go to SQL Workshop, RESTful services, and I'm going to create a module. So let's say I'm gonna create a module called order. And then my orders, so that orders is my base path. I'm gonna create a module. This is basically the module by which, uh, as I said before, the RESTful services are by resources. So the resources you need to reach out to them. So these are the modules and under the modules, you would need to create a template. Now in the template, let's say I'm gonna get the details of the uh, details of the order. So I'm gonna create a, a, a template. Now within the template, I'm gonna say what kind of handler I'm gonna create, whether I'm gonna do a get method or a post method or a delete method. So let's say for example, I'm gonna do a get method. So in the get method, all I'm gonna do is a simple select asterisk from I created the table as I and order. So let's double check that whether is this right. So that's, I believe it's I and orders. Yes, that is right. So I'm gonna create, so this is all I gave. Create handler, boom. My RESTful service is ready. Let's try that. I just copy this RESTful service, go to my, so go to my, so I hope everybody knows this, this is a Postman, this is a REST client, uh, just to kind of simulate how my POS system would do it. So I'm gonna say, go to this particular resource, using a GET method, find me the data. So I got all the data, but I got all the data, in a paginated way because I gave 25 as the first set of data which I would want to do it. To make it a little bit more, did I get the right data? So let's see that. So I can say order by ID in the descending order. I say line and then say do another search again. I got Bala who did for 100 rupees and the order item is 369, that's banana cake, and the customer is Enoch. But my POS system needs the last created order. So very simple. I would say select asterisk from order by, order by. Select, select. Just to be very sure, I'm gonna check if my query is correct. Run, there you go. So, now I apply my change. I got the data what I exactly needed it. So this is the data which my POS system needs it. So the POS system says, so POS system, what it has to do is just query the rest and it would have the customer name, it would have the, the representative who kind of collected this money, and then, uh, you know, uh, what is the order by, and uh, the payment mode. So all of them are available, so the POS system is now, is now having all the data. Completely disconnected, discrete applications, they are not interconnected anyways, and, and a whole lot of integration done seamlessly with just the click of a button. And that is how a RESTful services work. Right, having said that, now Bala, this is all very simple. So I'm gonna stick onto my uh, demo with get method, but what else can be done with the RESTful services? What else odds, odds provide to us? So if you, if you, if you see in the, uh, so, so the other way of working is, let's say for example, uh, let's take an example of, let's say I would, I, 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 know, I would like to go to flickr.com always, and I would wanna know, who is the, let's say for example, I would wanna see this photo and who is the creator for this photo. So Flickr gives you a REST API 
and I can consume that in my Oracle Apex application. So how do I do that? Uh, very simple. So all I have to do is, let's say I'm gonna create an app. Let's say, I, let, let, let's create an app, I would say. So, so I'm gonna create an app. I say Flickr uh, owner details, right? And then I say create app. Now an app is created. Now let me let me go to the uh, let me go to the home page, and I'm saying okay. I am going to create, uh, I'm going to show, I mean, if I know, if I know the Flickr ID, then I would need to know the Flickr username. That's what I'm going to do right now because I have an API which, uh, which Flickr gives, which will give you the Flickr details, right? So to do that, what I need is I would want to go to a, a, sh a shared component. And if you see here, the data source. So in my data source, I can take web source module. This is for a generic module. And let's say, for example, if you have uh, another Oracle Apex application where you have odds enabled, then you could have REST enabled sequels, which is much more powerful because we know the kind of RESTful standards being followed, and uh, and 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 you could you could do multi, much more uh, much more uh, features here. So to stick on to the demo, I would go on to the web search module. Now, this web search module, I'm going to create a new one from scratch. So. I'm going to use a simple HTTP protocol. I mean, simple HTTP uh, API. So this is an API which I have with me. I'm going to give it as Flickr. And then, as I said before, when we talk about REST, we talk about a few keywords. One is URL, and that's what I'm giving it here. So when I give the URL, the system understands, oh, you know what, you're going to connect to this particular base URL, and this is the service URL next and i don't have an authentication here so that's fine by me i say discover automatically discover everything you know rest went into the system it found what kind of object it is if you see the data profile it says it's a json object there are so much number of objects available so i can show you what exactly i did in the rest so So when I reached out to a Flickr API, it gave me these details. It said that, hey, there's a photo and the photo owner is these, 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 and the photo had a title, the photo had a description and a and, and lot more data as which, which is needed. And by default, Apex went to the lowest level of, uh, uh, lowest level of the uh, node. So it went down to the tags and like photos, tag and tag. That is what it reached out to. So what happened is, if you see here, Apex and Odds found that it, the response type is JSON. The row selector, it said the lowest one photos dot tags. So you can change this. And then it says, okay, I'm gonna take that into a return table. So you have all the data is available. I did not do a single line of code and everything is there for you. So I'm saying, okay, create a web source now, so created one. What I can do is now that I need, so given the fact that, you know, Oracle by default or the Apex by default went to the lowest one, but I would need the owners. So I, I want to kind of re-profile it to say that, you know what, take me only for the photos. So I can do that again by a single rediscover. So if you see here, I could go to the edit pro data profile and then say, I don't, the row selectors, I just want to be at the photos level apply and then rediscover beautifully done it has now taken based on the photos based on the data profile it said you know what these are the data available so the owner details are available from the msid so i say replace data profile so it's going to override from whatever before to the new one so now it was able to read the API. It was able to parse the API. It was able to suggest me what kind of data types are these, what kind of visibilities I can do with it, and what are the identifiers. So all of them are automatically profiled and provided to you. So done. I have 
got my rest enabled now. So, yes, I have got it. Now, how can I use this one? So, going back to my application. Right. I'm going back to my application, the, the very base application which I created. So, the page is blank. So, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a region to it. Since because the web source module said that it's going to, it, it, it returned you a table type, all I'm going to do is create a simple classic report and say, okay, go create a simple classic report. Now, it's a classic report, location type is web source, and I have a Flickr, and I say, Right, I have all of these available here. So for simplicity purpose, I'm gonna hide this for now so that it's very legible for all. I'm sorry to interrupt, Bala. You might want to wrap up a bit. Yes, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not audible. No, no, um, uh, we are running short of time, so. Okay, I'm, I'm closing it up quick. So, uh, um, I was able to read the data and I got the data. So for a given particular REST API, for a given particular thing, I have the data. Pretty neat and cool. So um, the last part is basically, okay, now, now that I have got a static one, how do I make it dynamic? Very simple. All I have to do is just add an item I just add an item. And then let's say I call this as ID. Save. And then to this particular, to this particular region, I would say, go to the parameters and I say, you know what, the photo ID here is not, it, it should be based on the item I'm gonna give. And that's it save and for simplicity sake i'm gonna make this uh maybe i would say a value pair save run all right so i'm gonna give the id here let's say i take an id So I provide an ID, it said it's based on a particular image. Now let's take, for example, just to, to make this a little bit more live. So I, I take this photo, so I take this ID, copy, and then paste, enter. So I was able to parameterize my entire web source completely through, a, through, through Apex. So if you see here, this is done by El Ramalingam and uh, that you could see here, that's Ramalingam and that's what his name is about. So what I said here is, how can you extend your application from Apex to whatever the data you have it in your Oracle database to a data on the web? So you could scrape the data through APIs, you could get that, you could do all of them. You could also mash up the data from the web to what you have it on the database. And that's how you could give it as one application. And, and, and that's all about uh, from, uh, uh, from me on the RESTful services. What I just took is only on the get part, but there are much more to explore post. And, 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 and uh, with, with having REST and with having Oracle Apex, you could build any application which you could imagine. Over to you, Titania. Thank you all for joining in. All right. Uh, thank you, Bala. And uh, the next section is a uh, quick start with OR2 by Jaydeep Basamia. Uh, Jaydeep is an Oracle Apex consultant, integrator, and blogger with more than 12 years of experience in Apex and other web driven technologies. Over to you, Jaydeep. And uh, we might extend the session for another 10 to 15 minutes more. Uh, so please stay tuned. Thank you.
Um, Jadip, are you speaking? We can't hear you. Yes. Uh, okay. So good evening to all of you. Uh, I am Jadip Posamia, uh, Oracle Apex consultant from 10 plus years of experience in Apex and a uh, couple of years in uh, Java J2E technology. Okay, so quick start. Uh, uh, my topic for today is uh, how we can enable O2 uh, to the RESTful uh, web services. The, uh, Pala has explained uh, uh, about the RESTful web services and uh, I'm going to extend that further how we can add a security layer to that O2 web services and why it is required. So, uh, to start with, uh, uh, agenda for today will be uh, to understand about what is REST. Uh, we already know a little, about, little bit about that. Uh, what is OAuth 2? And we will run through a demo where uh, uh, I will enable uh, the OAuth 2 to the example, uh, the default Oracle uh, ex example web service. And then any questions and uh, answers. So REST is a representational uh, state transfer is a protocol uh, like uh, uh, data sent from one system to the another system. It's a, it's a protocol driven, uh, uh, particularly formatted data understand by two system. Uh, it has a method like get post put delete. Uh, objective of this, uh, objective of this uh, slide was just to introduce you to the URL a sample a URL where I can uh, uh, query the data. So uh, I'm going to use one tool uh, which is called advanced rest client that is same as the postman uh, but a lighter version. Okay so this is my URL uh, and I'm going to request this URL. Okay say for an example I do not have any headers any variable at the moment and I'm requesting the data and I got the uh, result saying the employee detail. So this is probably fetching the all employee uh, data uh, from the employee table. And uh, this is my output, okay. So now, uh, what is OAuth2? So OAuth2 is again, uh, it, is, it, is an, uh, it, is a, it is a security protocol uh, like uh, you can introduce to your rest web services okay to, to secure your rest web service uh, you're going to use some layer security layer and one of the uh, one of the layer is at O2 layer you can secure your rest web service now why we need uh, O2 for any applications, any web applications, we use uh, login credentials, we use authorization schemes, authentication schemes uh, to, to restrict your data to the users, okay? okay. And uh, we, must, we must do that. But uh, in many times I've seen that uh, people do not implement, uh, uh, implement the security to your to the restful web services because it is not visible to the user but still it transfers the data right if i hit url i got the data so anybody can hit this url and get the data and sometimes uh, your data is important that you do not want to allow to the other users to view the data as well so uh, to overcome that uh, there is an oath to a uh, word is a bit bit like uh, how I will do that but it is very simple we can quickly configure that and we can use that okay so first uh, first thing what I will do is uh, I will add a security layer to this web service so that nobody can access that then I will provide access to a particular uh, client okay so <clears throat> to do that uh, so according to the slide, uh, we have gone through the OAuth 2, why it is required and we are on the sample demo now. So these are the steps uh, by which we can enable uh, the OAuth 2 and uh, call the secured web service. So I have copied these uh, steps to my uh, SQL developer file, okay. So, so th those are the steps, define the role, uh, define the privilege then create a client 
then uh, grant the client to a role, uh, generate the client ID and the secret, and how we can use that further to consume that. Okay, so we'll go uh, one by one. Let me just test the connection whether it is still alive. So, uh, so first, uh, first we are going to secure uh, the web service uh, which we have just consumed. Okay, and then it will be uh, it will be uh, where we will uh, we will add the security layer. Okay. So in order to do that, uh, this is the ORDS is the package, uh, default library package, where we can call this create role, which is going to create this new role, Apex India role. Okay. So I'm going to do that. It is successful. Then I'm going to define the privilege. So to do that, if you have seen this, ORDS is again a library and define privilege is the procedure. The parameter said your name of the privilege, what is the role? So role is the worker array where you can add multiple roles. But for this example, we have created this Apex India role, which we are going to use it here. So my value is this. Then uh, any pattern you want to restrict, this is like a bit advanced that uh, if you want to just restrict some, some specific uh, resource and not entire uh, module, then you are going to use that. But for this example, we are just going to uh, restrict entire module. The entire module, which means Oracle example HR. This entire module is going to be uh, secured. And uh, that means all the resource under that, all the web services under that module is going to be uh, secured. So uh, my module is Oracle example HR here and uh, my label and any description. So I'll just uh, execute this to create the privilege. Now, uh, one more thing, uh, you can do these uh, two steps here as well. Uh, you can see this privileges and roles section. Uh, if you see here, you, uh, it has created this Apex India privilege and a role as well. So you can do same thing uh, from the UI, but uh, it is better to be a scripted. Then uh, if you have seen this, uh, the, as I have created the privilege, uh, I have assigned this role and it has also protect my module Oracle example HR. What does this mean is I, am, I should not be able to access this web service as I was able to do right before. So if I try to access this web service now, uh, it will give me some output says that you are unauthorized and you need to have some login credentials or some uh, access key required, okay? Now, up to this step, we have secured our web service. Now, next, how we are going to allow uh, my client to access the web service. Okay, so in order to do that, uh, we will quickly need to create a new client. Okay, so to create a new client, uh, again, we have auth2 uh, as a library package and a create client uh, uh, procedure where I will, uh, I'll say my name, uh, my grant type, it should always be client credential, it is by default. Uh, then owner, what will be my schema owner? Uh, any description, any support email, and this is important here. Uh, it should be, it should be always uh, the privilege. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, privilege that we have created. So my privilege that we have created is this privilege, right? So it should match here privilege name, so that uh, the client is privileged to use all the protected modules of that. Uh, of that web service okay so here I'm going to create a new client okay mm -hmm. I see okay so there is already an entry I should delete that sorry about that uh, okay. I 
think there is already a key yeah there is a key created and uh, the mistake is this okay so we are all set again uh, to move forward and uh, i'm going to now create the client and it has been successful then uh, i want to grant uh, this client to a role because unless i will not uh, grant this to that role it won't allow me to uh, access that web service so this this client is assigned to this role now and uh, this, these are the steps to set up uh, the client okay and uh, to see whether it has been successfully created my key and uh, secret key and uh, client id i need to execute we can get it through user odds client which is apex internal table apex internal table and we can get this uh, client id and the client secret okay so these two are the important keys uh, in order to uh, access the web service now uh, what is the next step ideally uh, ideally uh, if if anyone uh, of you has consumed the uh, restful web services by aws or any other uh, secure then uh, generally we get these kind of keys right client id and client secret and then we uh, encrypt that uh, generate some base 64 uh, string and then pass that to an authorization token and uh, order to get that so same we have done the here and uh, we have client id client secret now next step what i will do is uh, up to this if you can provide this to your client then they should be able to consume this secure web services okay these two are the keys which we need to provide to your client client means any ios application android application or any php or dotnet application who is going to consume your restful web service okay so how they will be able to do that and what are the steps so by default it is not like we need to pass some something to the url something to the restful web service in order to get the result right so what is that something so to generate a token uh, in order to do that uh, you need to pass the client id and the client secret which is going to generate your base 64 encoded string so these ideally these steps are done by your client okay but if you want to give them base 64 encoded string it's up to you you can provide that as well so this has generated base 64 encoded string a little bit uh, additional character is there which i'm going to remove a uh, new line character is added so ideally a string should be like this only you can generate the same string uh, using uh, using p2a function by uh, using a javascript so if you go to the console and just type window dot b2a and here you can provide the same string it will generate uh, uh, the same output so the format of this uh, pattern is your client id then a colon sign in between and then your client secret I'll copy this just here and it has generated the same string okay so once we have this base 64 encoded string the next step is uh, I have this uh, get URL right this is my get URL employees so HR is my module and employee is my template and which is the web service okay so up to this is the uh, oracle uh, host url right so here we have something called oath slash token so up to this my internal host url and from here i have oath slash token so this is by default uh, enabled by the apex in order to generate the token so this comes by default with the apex and uh, if you enable the ORDS, yes, you should be able to generate the auth token using this tool so this is like you have to write in this pattern only auth slash token 
and what is the format of this so your first parameter is authorization and you are going to pass basic space my base64 encoded string so my base64 encoded string is this then content type will be url encoded and in body these are two header parameters and in body i have a parameter called grant type which is equal to client credential so if you remember uh, while we have created uh, the privilege uh, while we have created the client uh, we have given the client credentials okay as the grant type so same grant type we, have, we are going to pass here as a client credential and once i execute this web service it is generating a token now this token is valid for 3600 seconds that, that means i can i can access this token up to one hour but this is a configurable parameter you can you can control this to a longer period or a shorter period once i copy this token uh, i can then this this my uh, url which is not giving me any output due to the added security okay now i want to consume this so what i need to do is i need to provide the authorization and barrier token this is nothing but a barrier token which is generated by this both list token web service so this is my access token till one hour i can consume this web service i can send the request and i got the result so uh, what this means is you have given the access to the uh, granted clients to consume your web service now the important thing is the keys so you need to protect your key you need to either uh, you know regenerate the keys after some times so there are a lot of lot of advanced things as well you can store these keys into apex now with the new versions so those things are uh, are there in the uh, over the internet you can uh, search and dig further uh, there are few useful blogs and the urls which i have came across and uh, you can refer them uh, I might uh, come up with a, a next version of this uh, of this series as a as an advanced uh, uh, four four two where you can uh, you can configure and uh, uh, configure the advanced things and uh, play with them. Thank you for the uh, thank you for that and over to you, Chaitanya. Thanks, Chaitanya. Thank you so much. Uh, I think we're pretty much done, except for one just slide from me right now. Let me just share before we close it. Okay, so thank you so much, all of you, for joining in the first ever virtual meeting for Apex India community. It has been a fantastic evening. We've got a lot of attendees from different parts of India. And we do want to continue uh, this going, keep going. So we will be having either monthly or once in two months or maybe quarterly sessions. Um, most likely, we definitely would love to come up with a session next month. So stay tuned and uh, please bookmark this URL, uh, bitly.com slash oracleapex hyphen India. And there are lots of interesting sessions coming up for you. And also do not forget to join the uh, Apex office hours tomorrow. Uh, it is uh, uh, to showcase Apex 21 new features, basically. So thank you so much, all of you, for joining this once again, and you have a good rest of the day or a rest of the night. Thank you so much. Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you, Chetanya. Bye. Bye. Thank you.